Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our final council meeting of 2023. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the adequate notice compliance statement. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the city clerk's office in preparation of the council annual meeting notice dated December 15, 2022, which was properly distributed and posted per statutory requirements. Please be advised the fire exits are to my right, your left, and at the back of the room. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Ms. Allen? Here. Ms. Fox? Here. Ms. Hamlet? Dr. Levine? Here. Mr. Vinegar? Here. Mr. Ms. Sank? Here. President Bartan? Present. Thank you. And let's do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please read the explanatory notes regarding closed session and hearings and comments. A closed session meeting as authorized by state statute was announced and held prior to the start of this meeting and the known items for discussion were listed on the published closed session agenda. <coughs> Please be advised that council meetings are broadcast live on Comcast Channel 36 and Verizon Channel 30 and rebroadcast on Thursdays and Saturdays on HTTV on Comcast 36 and Verizon 33. When invited to speak, please come to the lectern, clearly state your name and address, spell your last name, and speak into the podium microphone so that your comments can be understood by all and properly recorded. Whenever an audience or council member reads from a prepared statement, please give or email a copy to the city clerk's office at cityclerk at cityofsummit.org. To help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit all to be heard, speakers are asked to limit their comments to approximately three minutes or so in length. Unless you're using an electronic device to follow the meeting agenda or needed for professional emergency contact purposes, please turn it off. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're moving on now to approval of the minutes. So do I have a motion to approve the regular and closed session meetings of the December 5th meeting, as well as the capital budget workshop that was on December 13th? So moved. Second. OK. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have any abstentions for that one? Um, yes, for capital budget, but I approve the minutes for last council meeting. OK. OK, very good. Uh, so the motion carries. Thank you. Um, all right, on to reports. Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. I was very pleased to officiate the ribbon cutting ceremony for the 12 beautiful new homes that the city contributed $1.4 million toward and built in partnership with Habitat for Humanity. I was able to thank Habitat for its role in bringing more affordable housing options to Summit and welcome our new residents. It was very moving. They were all incredibly thrilled to be here. Um, now I would like to thank Matthew DeLore and the Department of Community Services for the hours of work they contributed to make the project successful. It was not an easy job, and Jen Blades also deserves my thanks. Um, and your diligence, empathy, and patience brought it through beautifully to completion, so thank you. Applications for the 2024-2025 pre-kindergarten program are now available online and may also be obtained in purchase person at the primary centers and at the Office of Special Services during school hours. Prospective students must be residents of Summit, toilet trained, and at least three years old by October 1, 2024. Students will be selected for this program by lottery. All applications must be received by the primary centers no later than 4 p.m. on January 17, 2024. The lottery drawing will be live streamed from the Board of Education on January 18, 2024 at 10 a.m. The link to watch the live stream will be available on the district website the day of the drawing. There will be no in-person attendees. More information is available at the district's website summit.k12.nj.us slash registration. Now through Saturday, December 30, there are no fees required for parking at 90-minute on-street spaces, the Bank Street lot, and the first level of the tier garage for up to two hours. Time limits will be strictly enforced. Fees are still required in the park and shop lots 
onto Forest and in the YMCA library parking lot. And remember that the first hour in the DeForest lots is always free. And as a reminder, there are holiday safety tips from both the Summit Fire Department and the Summit Police Department on the city website at cityofsummit.org and on city social media channels. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Administrator Rogers. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a few items. Uh, please be advised of the updated schedule for construction work on Colonial Road, weather permitting. Uh, Wednesday, December 20th, uh, milling of the road will take place. Thursday, December 21st, paving will occur. Uh, work will be performed before, uh, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Residents should park on the neighbor neighboring side streets during milling and paving operation when the, full, the road is fully closed. Police will be on site to direct traffic during the project work. Uh, please be advised of the following city schedule changes and closures for the, for the Christmas and New Year's holidays. Uh, city offices will be closed on Monday, December 25th and Monday, January 1st, 2024. Household trash collection schedule does not change on holidays. It is picked up as usual. Uh, there is a modified recycling schedule for the week of Christmas and New Year's. There is no recycling collection on Monday, December 25th, or on Monday, January 1st. Uh, all collections during these two weeks will be moved to the next day. Monday will be picked up on Tuesday, Tuesday on Wednesday, and so on. Recycling items should be placed at the curb by 6 a.m. on the scheduled day for a weekly pickup. Please use the C-Click Fix app uh, or the Report a Concern uh, module on the city website to report <laughs> missed pickups. Uh, and that's at the cityofsummit.org slash report a concern. Uh, more information on trash and recycling is available, cityofsummit.org slash recycle. And I'd like to just wish everybody a happy holidays, and I look forward to 2024. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers to that. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> Um, all right, so I've got a little bit of a report here. I'm going to do this. All right, so at the beginning of the year, I spoke about the things uh, that you should expect from this council uh, that they would focus on first, ensuring the health and safety of the city. Uh, second, responsibly managing our fiscal resources. And third, pursuing the goals set forth in the master plan. So a few times throughout this year, I've updated the community on specific policy initiatives uh, and other actions that the council has taken. And as this is the last meeting of the year, I will do so briefly, I promise, again. Uh, so here's what they were as a reminder, which is continue to address vehicle thefts, improve pedestrian and traffic safety, ensure utility companies complete paving work, assist the unhoused population, adopt a responsible budget, reach decisions about Broad Street West and Maple Street, open the dog park at the transfer station, initiate a plan for rehabilitation of the playgrounds, continue construction of the Summit Park Line, and support and construct affordable housing. So here's where we are on vehicle thefts and attempted thefts. Uh, there is a decrease in year over year, in, uh, year over year in actual thefts while, of course, attempts persist. So many, many thanks to the Summit Police Department uh, and thanks to the members of the community who have removed their keys and locked their vehicles when parked. Uh, and there are ongoing targeted patrols and enforcement. Uh, this council has also invested uh, in technology approved from the capital budget uh, that has been installed in several vehicles and around starting to be installed around the city uh, for the automated license plate reader or geofencing technology. And of course, uh, the mayor has described her collaboration and the police department's collaboration with various task forces and other communities as well. So on the pedestrian and traffic safety front, uh, there have been 18 uh, pedestrian involved accidents this year that's compared to 19 last year. Um, so flashing beacons have been installed at four new intersections throughout the year this year. Uh, Bryant Parkway at the last meeting uh, was made permanently one way. Uh, the Prospect Street sidewalk is complete. The Hobart project is complete. A million dollars in grants was received for Canoebrook Parkway and $500,000 in grants were received for a, a new incoming sidewalk uh, in sometime in next year, hopefully, uh, for Broad Street. Um, and of course, uh, the three E's continue to be a focus, education, engineering, and enforcement. 
So on the utility front, um, the reps attended meetings this year, PSE&G and New Jersey American Water. Um, PSE&G work looks to be nearly complete throughout town. Um, so the, the infrastructure updates uh, that happened throughout the downtown I, that I think we were all gearing up for to be really, really awful, I think were not as awful as we were expecting. I think it took, uh, it completed relatively quickly, um, and now it's all repaved and looks uh, and, and feels very good. Um, and, and of course, uh, congrats and thank you to our communications office for uh, constantly putting out all this information uh, that was changing very regularly from the utility companies. Uh, okay, on the unhoused population. So at this time last year, we were looking at about 60 plus individuals, individual people who were unhoused in the city. Um, and it's now at about 20, uh, 23 approximately, who are uh, the vast majority of whom uh, are engaged with professional case management services. So that's incredible. Um, the city has, has joined the Union County Continuum of Care uh, and uh, Councilman Miniger, thank you for going uh, and representing Summit at those meetings, along with the various nonprofit groups uh, that have been going along with you. Um, I think what we've seen from the nonprofit community is, uh, I think, a, a sort of professionalization of their, of their operation that also includes diversion programs, meaning, essentially, someone comes to Summit to receive services that is not from Union County or is eligible for services elsewhere, that's really where they need to be getting those services. And, and taking uh, seriously the, the intake process to make sure that we're getting the appropriate information for people and getting it into the statewide system to get them connected to resources that are available. Um, and of course, we're encouraging the nonprofit partners throughout the community to provide status reports to the community about where they are and what they're doing. Um, and of course, uh, determining if programs that are already existing in Summit are eligible for other funding sources. Um, a responsible budget. Uh, I think it, this was adopted. That's my opinion. Um, the uh, county budget was flat with no increase. Uh, the apportionment with the county went up slightly. The school budget this year increased by 1.98%. Uh, the municipal budget was introduced at the April 18th council meeting adopted unanimously at the May 16th council meeting. Uh, so the all-in property tax picture this year was a 1.1% increase, which is $206 uh, for the average household. So the process for the 2024 budget has begun. We had already my favorite meeting of the year, which is our capital budget workshop. Um, and that was, uh, again, just to emphasize uh, the proposed capital budget, we have to do some work to refine that. And again, in my opinion, I think we have to make a couple cuts as we move into next year. Um, so the path for Broad Street West, there, is no, there was no path for Broad Street West. Um, so the conditional designation with developers was removed at the July 5th council meeting. Uh, redevelopment plan was repealed at the September 19th council meeting. Uh, the air in need of redevelopment designation was repealed at the October 3rd council meeting. Uh, there was a complaint filed by the former uh, designated redevelopment partner, uh, but a motion to dismiss has been filed by the city's uh, special counsel, and that was done uh, this month. So that is the update there. On the dog park, we do look to, I think we are on track to open this uh, before the end of the year. Uh, so that's very exciting. And we did pass a resolution earlier this year uh, to name it after uh, our, our friend and former colleague, uh, Matt Gould and his family. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, playgrounds. So the plan was received by the engineer and consultant. Of, co of course, these things are way more expensive uh, than you would imagine them to be in the multi-million dollar range for almost all of them. Um, so maybe playground plans have been finalized. Uh, and there is an emphasis on accessibility for that playground. Um, fundraising is ongoing, so community donations are most certainly welcome, and you can visit the City of Summit website. Uh, but also, we are we are looking uh, and are positive about, uh, optimistic about rather, um, a number of grant opportunities there as well. Uh, <coughs> construction of the park line. So uh, earlier this year, the Lord Family Bridge uh, was installed and dedicated. Uh, the Parkline Foundation and Capital Projects Committee will continue project work. 
Um, everything requires, of course, council approval. Um, so the next phases require a plan for the screening and the landscaping and all that stuff uh, before any other construction can be done. And of course, it all has to come back again before council. Um, and support the rehabilitation and construction of affordable housing. So as the mayor mentioned, uh, I don't normally get that emotional at things, uh, but that that dedication of the habitat uh, units really was something else. Um, almost all the families were there to speak, and they spoke about how grateful and proud they were to live in this community. And uh, more than a few used the words uh, "American Dream" when they were describing uh, this incredible opportunity that they have. Um, <clears throat> so. Seven new affordable units are coming as a result of the zoning board's uh, expect, uh, approval of the Turconnell Park project. Um, and uh, the housing authority is in the process of its renovation process. As we heard at the last council meeting, um, we approved a resolution of need in support of their application for funding. Um, so that is another exciting uh, development for them. Um, and uh, just for... Uh, to wrap this all up, uh, I would like to say thank you. Uh, I think that this has been uh, this has been a uh, difficult, challenging, fun, and exciting uh, year for for council and the mayor and the community. And uh, I, I want to thank my the mayor and my council colleagues, Michael, Tammy, department heads. We continue to ask more of you, and you have responded with incredible grace under pressure. Um, there is nobody in the entire world like Rosie. Uh, you really have to be, you get it, you get it just speaking to her as a regular person, right? You understand it a little bit better when you're a member of council, and then you, you really get it if you get to be council president and sit where I, where I do. So you're the best, so thank you. Um, and thank you to uh, my family, my friends, and uh, all those who engage in our government. Um, so that's my report, and we will move on. Um, all right. We have a report from the fire chief. Do you need this? Uh, we'll give that to the chief again. Thank you. It was working backwards. I don't know why. Backwards. Yeah. <laughs> backwards was forward. Forwards was backwards. You know. You got the right way? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's going to work normal for you we'll now. Say, yeah. <laughs> okay, Good. Chief, give it a shot. Oh, it's not share screen. Hold on. Oh, you're moving through the whole thing. I don't know if that worked. See if that worked. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. There we are. Thank you. Yeah. Did it work? For All righty. You? We're good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. Madam Mayor, Council President, appreciate the opportunity to present our update on the new fire rest project. Um, we'll jump right into it. All right. So uh, these are the numbers. Uh, this is a recap of regionally allocation for the project. The numbers are up there, paid or encumbered cost, section 20 paid or encumbered cost, and our total unexpected balance to date. Um, all these numbers up here. So um, regional contract amount, 
17650. So anytime we do it, anytime we, um, that's the amount that was awarded for bid. Anytime we change that number, we have to do a change order. It's either an increase or to decrease or a credit back, but it all has to go through council for resolution because technically we're actually changing that dollar amount that we awarded the bid to. So that gets reflected in, in the cost. So we've had, um, we've had uh, five uh, increases. We had one uh, credit back and we have more credits coming on the way. And then um, total change order increase to date is 95,425 and bottom of the new contract um, amount. It's also interesting to note that um, typically on a project this size, you spend about five to 10% on contingency costs, which range from 750 to 1.5 million. To date, we have less than 1% of contingency costs. So that's the great work of the men and women of the fire department. We spent a lot of time on this project to keep the cost down. So we're doing a great job with keeping the change order costs very down for the project. Our next slide, we'll talk about scheduling. Um, this is every, we meet every two weeks and we go with the contractor and our, and our uh, team to talk about what the next steps are progress-wise in the project for the next two weeks. So right now, um, the biggest push now is getting the exterior of the project done, the site work, the, um, south, the, the uh, east side of the building towards Leonard Duane, all the concrete pads have been poured. They're, they're getting ready to do the other side of the building. Uh, in some interior work, uh, finishing up the AC work, some air conditioning, things of that nature, that's all going on the next couple of weeks. Um, we are a little bit behind schedule on the project, but eight months. A lot of that has to do with initially with some material uh, supply issues from COVID. Um, we've had some issues with scheduling with New Jersey Transit, with their flagman and our contractors. There's been some subcontractor changes uh, throughout the product, all the things added up. Um, there is language in our contract to protect the city, any, any cost that incurred by the city beyond that. There is language to protect us for that. And when the product's over, we'll be going over with the lawyers and try to get whatever we need to be reimbursed, we'll be uh, take, take note of that. All right, this is some look to the product outside the building. All the masonry work has been completed. All the brickwork is up. All the lighter color, all the limestone has been installed along the building. Windows are installed. Um, almost all the roofing is completed. There's some soft work left to be done. Um, this is the side facing Salerno Duane. This is all concrete. A couple weeks ago, they got that site ready, prep work for concrete. The doors have been installed. And this is the ongoing work of the concrete on the pad. This is probably the biggest part of the project left is getting all the concrete down. On, on the apron so the fire trucks can drive on them. And that to date, this has been completed on Friday. So this part of the building is all completed. They're gonna shift gears and go over to the side by the uh, uh, a parking garage next. Uh, more exterior view, this is the exterior the view of the parking garage side, doors are in. Uh, we did have to put some temporary heating in. Um, it's getting very cold now, a lot of sheetrock, wood is in the building, so we had to bring some temporary heating to uh, heat the building. And this is another view of Broad Street facing the, um, the building with all the cast work on it. Right. So overall, um, product's going well. Uh, we are still working within our $16.1 million budget. We have not exceeded that yet, uh, even with some of the um, contingency costs. We're doing good at that. As far as scheduling goes, we're hoping sometime in end of February, March-ish, we should have the, the construction done. There'll be a time for punch lists, things of that nature, so we're, we're progressing along. So with that, that is my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Chief. Questions? Yeah, Marge. Yes. Um, thank you for the presentation, Chief. Um, I was just want, I just wanted uh, you to remind me. Um, it's it, you said we've spent about one percent of con, um, contingency costs, and we we budgeted for three percent contingency. We did, correct? yeah, we did. Yeah, so we budgeted about. Um, we felt right before we talking to Michael and the budget about capital when we talked with the project, we felt pretty confident that we we've, we've kind of checked off a lot of boxes as far as the building goes. So we felt three percent is what we put in for contingency costs. So it so. looks like we're going to come in with well within that number. We are, yeah, yep. Enforcing any kind of big issues. The biggest issue out there now is due to the transit expenses, but that we didn't budget for that. But that's still so. Hopefully, when all is said and done, we don't we don't foresee exceeding our budget right now. So when you say transit expenses, just for the audience, <coughs> New Jersey Transit cost uh, charging us for flagmen. For flagmen, yeah, yeah. So yes. there've been a lot of overtime expenses incurred. Anytime you're working within the proximity of their right of way or their, their tracks. We have to have a transit representative on scene to protect their, their um, right away. So, okay. thank you for that clarification. Great. Thank you. All good. Okay. Great. Other Thanks. questions? That's it. Thank, thank you. Pre you. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. This is really exciting. Good. Great. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chief. Okay. Um, we're moving on. We now have an ordinance for hearing. Madam Clerk, would you read that ordinance? 
<coughs> ordinance number 23-3304, ordinance to amend the code, appendix A, schedule of fees, contained in the revised general ordinances of the city of Summit. Okay, Council Member Miniger. Thank you, Council President. This is an ordinance that amends the city's code uh, city codes schedule of fees summit charges fees for services provided for licenses for renting of space and equipment and for the purchase of equipment such as golf balls departments periodically modify their fee structure in response to increasing operation costs such as materials and labor or expanded <coughs> program offerings or some combination of the two depending on the department fee structure changes often follow a thorough review of surrounding community fee structures in the case of community programs and recreation programs, for example, increases to some of those fees are due to a combination of labor costs, but also expanded program offerings and future program offerings. I move to open the hearing on this ordinance. A second. Okay, comments from members of council. Comments from members of the public. The hearing is now open. I think we're gonna go ahead and close the hearing on this one. Uh, we have an ordinance for final consideration. Anybody want to take a guess on what that could be? <laughs> <laughs> Madam, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3304, ordinance to amend the code, appendix A, schedule of fees contained in the revised general ordinances of the City of Summit. Okay, Council Member Miniger. Thank you, Council President. Having held this hearing just moments ago, I move this ordinance for final adoption. I second. Okay, let's take a roll call vote. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Fox? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Mr. Miniger? Aye. Ms. Sank? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. And the motion carries. Thank you very much. Moving on to resolutions. Two from finance. Council Member Miniger. Thank you, Council President. This is number 10879, and this resolution authorizes the transfer of appropriations in the operating budget from accounts with a surplus to those that are over. This is a regular occurrence in the last two months and first three months of the fiscal year. And this, uh, this particular set of transfers totals $71,500. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay, comments from members of council. Comments from members of the public. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote on this one, please. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Fox? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Ms. Mitker? Aye. Ms. Sank? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. The second one, Council Member Mittinger. Thank you, Council President. This is number 10813, and this resolution authorizes amendments to payroll done on a quarterly basis for changes that occur outside of the semi-annual salary resolutions. These include new hires, promotions, retirements, resignations, and other adjustments across all city departments. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay, comments from members of council. Comments from members of the public. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. On to law and labor. Council Member Sank. Uh, this resolution, number 10891, authorizes 2024 legal services in excess of $17,500 for the city solicitor and labor council services not to exceed $250,000. I move to adopt. Okay, and I will second that. Uh, comments from members of council? <clears throat> comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving on. My condolences to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love you. Okay. Um, Two from Administrative Policies, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Council President. Resolution 10880, sorry, 10880, uh, seeks to authorize our professional service agreement with our risk management consultant, Acrisure. I probably butchered that word, um, the name of it. Acrisure. Th thank you, Acrisure. Um, this is for January 1st through December 31st, 2024, um, Acrisure has been our risk management since 2018 and offers a high level of service to the city. Their claims processing and loss control departments in particular offer extremely comprehensive uh, services for data collection, reporting, and identifying the trends. In addition, the firm offers a variety of educational safety training programs delivered either online or on site. 
Um, they not only handle insurance claims, processing, and loss control, they also attend our monthly joint insurance fund meetings, as well as the quarterly risk management meetings. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. So, okay, comments from members of council? Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next one, Council Member Allen. Thank you, Council President. Pursuant to closed session, Resolution 10843 authorizes the recommended revisions suggested by the Municipal Excess Liability Joint Insurance Fund, um, the changes that we're making to our Employee Handbook and Personnel Policies and Procedure Manual um, were amended in the manual to reflect the state-related policy changes. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay. Comments from members of Council? Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Moving on to safety and health, uh, Council Member Fox. Thank you, Council President. Um, the first safety and health uh, resolution is ID 10863. This resolution authorizes the assignment of, le of lease purchase financing for two police vehicles from Santander, and it's, uh, the assignment is from Santander Bank to KS State Bank. Um, on May 2nd, 2023, um, Resolution 40718 authorized the lease purchase of two police vehicles under a state contract through Tax Exempt Leasing Corporation. Uh, the vehicles were delayed, and we and we just we were informed that from Tax Exempt Leasing Corporation that Santander Bank is no longer providing financing um, for purchases under $100,000. Uh, so this resolution will allow KS State Bank to provide the financing um, so the lease purchase can be completed. And this lease purchase will be under the same terms as were initially improved. I move this resolution. Okay, do we have a second? Council Members Hank? Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Comments from members of council? <laughs> Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. <clears throat> On to the next one, Council Member Fox. Thank you, Council President. Um, ID 10878. Um, as we discussed in closed session, this resolution will appoint three new probationary fighter, firefighters, all of whom are currently volunteer firefighters. And these, these appointments will be effective January 8th, 2024. Um, the safety committee had the privilege of interviewing all, um, all of the excellent candidates last week. And um, the new firefighters are Jerome Palmer, Colin Kidd, and William Mellick. I move this resolution. Second. Excellent. All right. Uh, comments from members of council? I'll just say uh, welcome. And thank you yeah. to our new firefighters. Yep. We look forward to having them. Yeah. Um, comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. Will there be a swearing in on January 8th, Chief? Yeah, the first full meeting in January. The 18th, is it? Oh, you'll do it. 16th. You'll 16th, do it. 16th, yeah. So we'll do it here. Yeah, we'll, just, okay. we'll do a swearing in of three candidates, uh, the three firefighters on. Uh, the second council meeting in January. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Excellent. All righty. Uh, capital projects and community services, Council Member Levine. Thank you, Council President. Resolution 10899 acknowledges and formalizes the emergency contracts which were awarded to Rapid Pump and Meter Service Company, Incorporated, to make the necessary repairs to both pumps at the Constantine Pump Station, both of which failed on November 22nd of this year at a cost anticipated not to exceed $60,000. Without both pumps operational, an increased flow event could result in a sewage overflow, creating a health and safety hazard for our community. It was anticipated that this pump station was in need of a major overhaul. And as such, this past July, this governing body unanimously voted to approve a contract for $998,412 for an, um, a company to perform this overhaul via resolution 10483. The Constantine pump station has not been overhauled 
since its original construction and parts are becoming increasingly difficult to obtain. That contract from July is inclusive of the items that failed last month and that now require emergency replacement. So parts of this, that contract were already awarded. It's called the bearing and the seal. And we will get credit for those parts later as while their failure was anticipated, we still hoped they would make it until this next overhaul, although they, although they didn't, for their scheduled replacement. Uh, I move to adopt this resolution. I second. OK. Comments from members of council? Through you, council president. Yep. Oh, do we know when the construction will start? Mm -hmm. The um, variable flow frequency, variable frequency drives, VFD, is that what they're called? Um, they have been ordered. They haven't come in yet. We're wait as soon as they do, they will be installed by this company. Um, and as far as the rest of the overhaul, that is underway on schedule as planned. I know that they paused operations in the fall so they could take necessary measurements of the equipment, and we're just waiting for them to sort of start that. But that's all proceeding on schedule. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, per her request, uh, Council Member Hamlet is not able to join us this evening, but I am relaying to folks uh, that she had a number of questions which were posed to Director Schrager and Deputy Director Blades, and those questions were addressed in the recent days. So thank you for that. Other comments? Members of council? Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you very much. On to the next one, Council Member Levine. <coughs> thank you, Council President. Resolution 10740. Awards a bid to Giordano Company for the marketing and transportation of recycling materials at the Summit Recycling Center for the 2024 and 2025 calendar years. Funding for this comes from the DCS operating budget. Their proposal was received by the purchasing department on November 16th, 2023. The specifications for the project um, solicited pricing for the materials to be that would be recycled, including fiber materials, mixed paper, old corrugated cardboard, or I'll refer to as cardboard, and various commingle containers. Based on the options and pricing for combinations of what these materials are and the type of container and who owns the container, whether it's us or the um, uh, company, the uh, transportation company, the city will be utilizing the following options in the recycling agreement. For dual stream fiber material, the, the material will be picked up and returned by the buyer at city facility using the city's containers. While for the dual stream commingle containers, they will be delivered, to the, delivered by the city to the buyer facility using city containers. And for cardboard, they'll be picked up by the city from central retail business district and residents drop off at city transfer station and delivered by the city to the buyer facility in city vehicles. That was a mouthful. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. OK. Comments from members of council? Council yes. President, through you. Yeah. <clears throat> Just to clarify, because it sounded like there may have been some changes to what we are currently doing. Mm -hmm. Is there any change to what we're currently doing? Um, no. What, there was a, um, another copy of this. Um, recently distributed and I think it was really just a typo like for example where it, it had said one BC because it was sort of like menus where you choose um, the type of material and whose container it's going to be and I think there was a typo I think it said one B but it really should have said one C because um, we're using the city's container for that particular one did I get that right that there's nothing okay yeah it was just really um like a typo essentially okay thank mm -hmm. you excellent sure. okay Council yep. President, just for clarification, too, for the public, there's not a lot of recycling companies. Right? Right. No, no, <laughs> no. And the, and the market, I mean, mm -hmm. the whole global market for recycling, recycled material is completely flipped upside down. What used to be a huge, yeah. huge source of revenue for the city is now a huge expense. And it's, and it's a global market forces thing. It's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Clearly, you've gotten me started. So, <laughs> um, All right. Any other comments? Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. 
On to the next one, Councilmember Levine. Thank you, Council President. Resolution 10870 authorizes an easement agreement with JCPNL regarding the installation and maintenance of a new utility pole for the new, um, for the new JCPNL pad mounted transformer. This is gonna be at the site of the new firehouse and it is time sensitive as the new transformer will provide power to the new firehouse. This pole would be between existing utility poles located on the northeasterly side of Broad Street. If Common Council approves this resolution tonight, then the mayor would be the one to sign the easement agreement with JCPNL. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay, comments from members of council? I have a question. Sure. What kind of backup do you have if the power goes out? Do you have a great big generator or what, what does happen? Yeah, so if the current firehouse loses power, we have a generator that's capable of, of supplying full power to the building. So we would have zero loss of power for the building. And that would happen again, that would be the new firehouse as well? Yes, yeah, we currently have in our building, but we also have one at our new building oh, as well. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of redundancies built into the station, so. Okay, thank Great. you. Thank you. Excellent. I actually have a question. Sure. Yep. I should have asked you this sooner. Um, the pole is the size of all the other poles around it, right? Not extra large. <laughs> yeah, it's the same size. Same okay. size pole. It, it, right. two, two, because of the transformers, the way that we had to put a different pole up there. So, okay. Yeah. okay. But it's in line with reducing poles. So. Okay. Right. Yeah, we talked about that also. Yeah. In our committee. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Good question. Okay. Any other comments, members of council? Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. And last one, Council Member Levine. Thank you, Council President. Resolution 10900 approves an address change from 86 Morris Avenue to 1 Canview Way. Summit East, which owns the property under discussion, recently received approvals from our planning board to proceed with Canview's proposed improvements to this property. The property currently has a mailing address of 86 Morris Avenue, and Summit East and Kenview are requesting that the mailing address of the property be changed to 1 Kenview Way. The post office will also need to approve this request. Of related interest, Kenview intends to rename some, in, some other internal streets which don't require our approval. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay, comments from members of council. Three, Council President? Yeah. Just curious, where is Kenview Way? And has it been renamed from something else, or is it an internal drive also? Yes, it is previously the unblanking. Was it the Celgene campus? Yes. Previously yeah. that campus by the community center and the tiny forest on the other side. Sure. And um, if you look in, hang on, I can pull it up right here. Oh, I'm probably not going to be able to find it quickly. But if you look at a map that's included in the agenda packet, it shows extensively its location, the prior names, the new names, as well as some renaming of internal streets. Thank you. It's all kind of fun. It is. It's some yeah. really fun names here. I'm actually, <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. found it. <laughs> so it's actually, Kenview is the name of the company. It's the J&J yeah. &J spinoff. So yes. they're just naming mm -hmm. it after themselves. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So there it's is no Kenview way anyplace else that we know of. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's just a conglomerate of many of those brand, of those yeah, brands. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's um, not to be confused with self-care avenue, which is just <laughs> parallel. Or skin, skin care. There's a skin care. Skin yeah. health road. Yeah. Skin Health Road is also there. Yes. Yeah. So. No, I think it's I think it's actually very smart and, and clever and creative, and I'm glad to support this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Any other comments, members of council? Comments from members of the public. All those in favor. Aye. 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 The motion carries. Excellent. That is it for all the uh, individual resolutions. We'll now uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd like to pull out one thing mm -hmm. from the agenda. Oh, okay. Just for the last time. Yeah, we've got all right. Two change orders here, and yes. we're going down one uh, decrease of 11,000, one decrease of 33,000. I always love pointing out when we save money. Yes, <laughs> so. yes. Those are both change orders in the right direction. That's so exactly I like, right. I like to talk about those. That's exactly. great. So do we have a motion to approve the whole thing? So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any other comments on the consent agenda? Okay. Mm -hmm. Comments from members of the public? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Excellent. We are now on to the public comments section of the meeting. At this point, council welcomes comments from any member of the public about issues that are not topics on tonight's business agenda. If you have a prepared statement, please provide this to the city clerk, and we will ask you to stick to about three minutes as it's getting pretty late. <laughs> I'm, ki I'm kidding. Come on up, Claire. <laughs> I'll keep it short. I'm Claire Toth, 11 Sunset Drive, um, and this is the last meeting for four of the most amazing women I've had the privilege to know. You've each had a different length of tenure. You've each had different challenges. And you've each risen to them and provided amazing service to the city of Summit. You've made it a better place to live for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Lisa Campbell, 27 Karen Way. Give me a second, okay. <laughs> First time, I think. Take your time. <laughs> I want to express my deepest gratitude and appreciation to the remarkable individuals of, of our city staff and those who have served on Common Council, particularly the ones who will not be returning in January. I'm getting emotional, sorry. <laughs> Mayor Nora Radist, Councilwoman Marjorie Fox, Councilwoman Jamie Levine, and Councilwoman Phyllis Sank. I would like to acknowledge their tireless efforts, unwavering dedication, and selfless commitment towards making our community a better place. Thank you for your service, your willingness to step forward and take on the responsibility of representing our community is truly commendable. You have shown us what it means to be true public servants, always putting the needs of others before your own. Throughout your tenure on the council, you have faced numerous challenges head on, from addressing complex issues that affect our residents' daily lives to making tough decisions that shape the future of our community. You have consistently demonstrated wisdom, integrity, and a genuine desire to serve in the best interest of all. You have been instrumental in fostering unity within our diverse community by promoting inclusivity and embracing different perspectives. Through open dialogue and collaboration with fellow council members as well as residents like me, you have created an environment where everyone's voice can be heard, ensuring that no one feels left behind or unheard. Your accomplishments are too numerous to list individually, but know that they will forever be etched into the fabric of Summit's history. From spearheading initiatives focused on sustainability and environmental conservation to championing causes that promote social justice and equality, your impact has been far-reaching. Today, I express my heartfelt gratitude for your service. Thank you for your countless hours spent away from your families, for the sacrifices you have made to be here, and for the passion you have poured into this role. Your contributions have not only shaped our community, but have also inspired us to become more engaged. As you transition from this chapter of public service, know that your legacy will endure. The positive changes you have initiated will continue to benefit generations to come. Your dedication has set a high standard for future council members. Thank you for serving on Common Council with distinction, compassion, and unwavering commitment. May your future endeavors be filled with success and fulfillment. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Lisa. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. That was so lovely. That's okay. I'll, I'll write it. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Come on up. Mimi Zukov, 49 Wade Drive. I came here tonight to express my gratitude to and my admiration of Marjorie Fox. Marjorie has worked tirelessly for the betterment of our city, giving unstintingly of her time and her skills. <clears throat> During her time on council, she served as council president for three years during the pandemic. Personally, it is because of Marjorie's example and encouragement that I became an environmental advocate. Today, I serve on the Environmental Commission and am the chair of the Recycling Advisory Committee, both positions that Marjorie held for many years prior to her terms on council. The Recycling Advisory Committee was fortunate to have Marjorie as our council liaison this year, during which time she advised and support our committee wisely. I am excited to see what Marjorie will do next with her 
um, with all her newfound time, free time. <laughs> Congratulations, Marjorie, and thank you for your leadership. Thank you so much, Mindy. It was thank lovely. You. Thank you. <coughs> Any other public comments? Hi. Good evening. I'm Amy Cairns. I'm the Chief Communications Officer for the City of Summit and a Summit resident at 41 Ashland Road. Madam Clerk, I emailed you a copy of my comments. Tonight I would like to say a few words on the last very happy and productive eight years I've spent working closely with Mayor Nora Radist. But first, Council Members Sank, Levine, and Fox. Thank you for your thoughtful approach to governance and for your service. It has been a pleasure to work with each of you. They say that the days are long and the years are short, and that is certainly true when I think about my role in supporting the mayor's office. Mayor Radist, your hands-on approach to leadership was new for us. You set weekly office hours and spent time almost daily in the building. Your open door policy at City Hall is not just a statement but a practice. You made it a priority to cultivate strong, meaningful relationships with city staff and among the residents of Summit. You're always available, approachable, and eager to listen to the concerns of constituents. And you work diligently to ensure that city staff feel supported and valued, understanding that a happy and motivated team translates into effective service for the community. Your leadership style is inclusive and transparent. You have fostered a collaborative environment where different voices can be heard and respected, including mine, and I really appreciate that. When I think about your accomplishment during your two terms, it is crucial to highlight your extraordinary role during the COVID-19 pandemic. It exemplified your ability to lead with conviction through a crisis. You, not, you were not only a figure of authority, but a source of comfort and hope for many during those uncertain times. Reading books to children on our YouTube channel and HGTV is one example that many of our youngest residents certainly enjoyed. Your actions and those of council and other community leaders helped to maintain the city's economic stability and without a doubt, those steps and concerted fundraising efforts preserve the unique character of our community. You have elevated the role of mayor, setting a high bar for future leaders. I know I speak for each of my colleagues in this room, those watching from home, and those who work with you at City Hall, when I thank you for your exceptional leadership and for your devotion to our city. You will be greatly missed, and your contributions to a community you love dearly will not be forgotten. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Okay. Public comments. Helena Levis, 24 Plain Street, Summit. Um, the meeting right before the election uh, the council was accused of being dishonest, taking bribes, taking money, and council president Vartan said, if you have evidence, go to the police. This is not the forum to say a crime has been committed. So it's been a month. Has any formal charges, evidence, or anything been presented against the council or any member of the council on taking bribes from Toll Brothers or any other company about the Broad Street West project? Or is this just a pre-election BS? Uh, well, not to my knowledge, Chief. No. 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 So, Someone just threw it out there that you guys are all dishonest and just wanted to straighten that out before the end of the year. And thank you for your service, and especially Marjorie. You're, I'm in construction, so pardon my 
language, you are a badass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I remember one of the first meetings that uh, Council President Vartan was uh, presiding over, and I thought you were going to go there and grab the gavel out of his hand. <laughs> But I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. And thank you, uh, Mayor Raddus. You are one of the warmest, most caring women I have had the uh, pleasure of uh, listening to over the years. Thank oh, well, you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what I was doing. The <laughs> yours. Not, I'm not the sure. yours. So. We'll have to go watch. We'll, we'll have to go watch yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was it. Maybe I was supposed to be doing something. Uh, anyway, um, any other public comments at this time? Okay, I'm going to close the public comment section of the meeting, uh, and we'll move on to council member comments and new business. I think some of us might have some things to say. Who three, wants to start? Council member Miniger. Three council president. Thank yeah. you. So I'll, I'm I'm fighting a little bit of a cold. I'm going to run through these quickly, but. Um, I want to start with uh, Nora, Mayor Radist. Um, Nora thank you, works. Nora. <laughs> um, thank you for being a superb mayor for eight years and for your leadership in some very difficult times. During the pandemic, people everywhere looked to their leaders for guidance, uh, for an indication that things are going to be okay. And as our mayor, you provided them that assurance that Summit would get through it. And you did it with a professionalism and poise that is... Uh, quite frankly, your trademark. Um, Summit is better because of your collaboration with fellow mayors around the state, um, as well as strategic outreach to officials at the county, state, and federal level uh, at times when we needed them to take action. <clears throat> but perhaps most importantly, you chatted with residents and council members too uh, as a normal part of your mayoral duties. You listened to the residents of the city. And so once again, thank you for being the approachable and highly effective mayor of Summit. Thank you, Andy. Council Member Fox, Marjorie. <laughs> um, I thank you for your leadership up here on the dais. You also helped guide our city through the pandemic. Um, our business community thrived because of the work of council under your leadership, and it continues to thrive to this day. You got this city over the greatest of hurdles, and nobody's gonna forget that. Um, I will always appreciate your sage advice and your very evident love for the city. Your tireless involvement in Summit, Council, Common Council, and beyond um, is commendable, and I know it does not end today. Thank you for your continued service to this community, Marjorie. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Jamie, Councilmember Levine. Uh, you have been such a competent voice on Council uh, and an incredible colleague and a teammate. A teammate. When discussing with you and uh, when discussion with colleagues um, the issues that affect residents of the city, you never failed to enforce strong consideration of a wide array of opinions. <clears throat> you consistently encourage us to see all the possibilities when marked when making our decisions, and you always took complex issues. Capital projects tends to be very complex. You took those complexities and you distilled them down into something understandable for us and for the city and in such a graceful way. You're an excellent communicator, and your voice will be missed up here. And I know this is not the end of your service to the community by a long shot, um, but uh, I wanna say this. Thank you for serving the community, Jamie. Thank you. And uh, Phyllis, Council Member Sank, uh, it's been a really good 10 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> With your prior years of service to the community, nobody could have filled a council seat better oh, than you. Thank you. Uh, I will occasionally reach out to you, and I promise not too often, I hope so. in the years to come for your unique and hyper-honest opinion. <laughs> hyper-honest. Thank you, I think. Thanks for <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> all right. I'm, I'm happy to go. Yes. Uh, this, uh, this 10, I first of all really have to thank Susan Harrison, who got this wonderful fellowship and moved off for a brief time and gave me this opportunity. The one thing I think I've never done for the city is be elected. I was always behind the scenes for a very good reason, because I figured nobody would ever vote for me. But <laughs> <laughs> so being appointed has been terrific. But really what has been eye-opening for me 
is um, the city staff. I, I, Rosie I knew 30 some years ago when we were building City Hall. Um, and just to see her, at that time she was an assistant to David Hughes, but we knew who did the work. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then just to have her, as, as you said, Greg, just to have Rosie there backing you up and with such good common sense and such deep knowledge is terrific. Um, meeting um, Chief Zagorski and, and Evers and getting to know Michael Rogers. I can see why he's so respected. Everybody just has such a love for this city and uh, Dora exemplified that. I mean, eight years of just incredible leadership. So I thank all of you for 10 incredible weeks. It's just been a, been a lot of fun. <laughs> and I have such respect for what it takes to be sitting up here and I offer my very best wishes, Lisa, to you and the whole new team that's coming in and be thankful that Greg and Andy are still gonna be with you because you're gonna need them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes. I'm glad to speak. Yeah. Sure. Thank you to everyone who's made comments this evening up here and there and uh, means the world to us. Thank you. So lovely. This year has really felt like a gift. And I like the way you put it about Susan's departure. Really feels like a gift. I've enjoyed every minute. I'm so proud of what we have accomplished. And um, I couldn't even begin to express how much I've learned. Um, but, well, one thing I've learned is, I mean, everyone at home doesn't really know what the staff does behind the scenes to help support the quality of life that we really, we, we work hard for. But... <clears throat> So many things that we 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 just don't realize is being done for us, but but I know I now know, and um, I will be forever grateful. And um, have, was really moved by seeing that part of how what makes the city great. Um, thank you to my colleagues. Um, really a great team. I'm just proud of everything we've accomplished. Um, I look forward to what will come in the future and look forward to continuing to watch. Um, thank you to my colleagues who are moving on to Phyllis. Uh, you really made a big impact in a short time and we're so glad to have you, thank you Jane. here. Um, Marjorie, Nora, I don't even, I don't know where to begin. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be brief, but um, you, you, took your oath seriously, both of you, and everything you do, everything you do is for the betterment of the city and, um, and for nothing more. And you always did it with kindness in your hearts. And um, so I enjoyed watching you and learning from you, so thank you. Um, this is my farewell, so <laughs> thanks to everyone and look forward to seeing all of you around town. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who's next? Okay. Yeah. Um, I figured I'd have another speech on the reorg meeting, but I just wanted to um, first start with you, um, Marjorie and Nora, um, together. <coughs> the words of um, people who come up and really appreciate you. It's a reminder that we're up here because we all love this community. Um, sorry, I ate a mint right before I started. <laughs> Let me finish my mint. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll put my glasses on so I can see everybody. Um, and I mean this it, truly. Um, it's really nice to hear how people feel about you, who are your friends, who have been on this journey with you. Um, because it reminds me that we're all human and you guys have walked through the fire. I mean, you really managed and shepherded the city through COVID. And um, that was a big lift. So, you know, I'm a, I appreciate it because I lived here too, right? And we were all fearful and, um, and you guys did it and under very extraordinary circumstances for you, Marjorie. So um, I think it's really, when you start something and you end something, it's a reminder all of a sudden that you're like, oh, maybe it wasn't so bad, or oh, I learned X, Y, and Z. You get caught up in the middle when you're on the dais, and sometimes you're in the fire. 
right? And things don't always go the way that you want, and you fight over things. Um, but I just want you to know I can really appreciate all the work that you've given, you know, the dedication you've given to this community well beyond council. Um, but picking up the phone every time I called and, um, you know, being able to fight it out sometimes up here and really appreciating each other and walking away knowing that um, we have a mutual respect for each other. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, I know you guys are both going to be very busy in retirement. And I know you have grandchildren, and um, but I just want to remind everybody that politics is really about people. Um, it really boils down to relationships and how we all love this community. And we have a new team coming up, um, and I know that everybody's excited. But I am happy to have Greg and Andy here. Um, I've already had many conversations with Greg because it's, well, you know. Anyway, um, can't go there. But I just uh, I wanted to have my back to you. I'm so sorry, Jamie. But I just wanted to say to Jamie, like you came up here with grace and style, and you really jumped in. Um, one of the things that you said to on the dais that I really appreciated is when you talked about the committees and the work that we do together. And it isn't political. Um, and it comes out, you, when we get out here, it feels incredibly political, and there's a bit of a um, pressure cooker. And you've just... You and I, I felt like, always had a relationship along that way. And um, so not always perfect, right? It's, we all make mistakes. And, um, but I feel like we've always had a really great ability to be on committees, get work done. Um, and I know that you're going to do great things in your next chapter, too. So um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Thank you, Phyllis. It was so nice to meet you. Um, all these years in Summit, 13 years, I never, I can't believe our paths never crossed. Um, I highly respect you. You're highly respected in, in, you know, in the community. So you'll be seeing more of me, yeah, or hearing more of me. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and I've appreciated thank having you, you up Lisa. here. So thank you so much. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Council President. Um, I wanted to first say thank you for all the kind comments um, from my colleagues and also from um, members of the community. It really means a lot. Um, as I prepare to retire from my position on the council, I've been reflecting on the past six years and the journey we've taken together as a community. It has been a great privilege to serve this wonderful city and to contribute to its growth and well-being. I served as council president during an extremely challenging times during the pandemic. I could not feel prouder, though, about the way we united to support our local businesses and to the, ensure the continuity of government services. This period tested our resilience and also highlighted our collective strength and adaptability. Um, a key focus of my tenure as council president and then as a member of the safety committee was to improve pedestrian safety. As Council President Vartan highlighted in his presentation, we've expanded our sidewalk network. We've also introduced a new side, we, in 2019, introduced a new sidewalk installation policy, which will be updated um, in the new year, I hope, and installed um, flashing beacons and four-way stops. These enhancements have all made our streets safer and more accessible for everyone. Um, education is a cornerstone of our community, and our schools are a reason that many residents have chosen to make Summit their home. Serving on the Board of School Estimate, um, I was proud to vote for the implementation of Universal Full Day Kindergarten. This initiative marked a significant step toward providing quality education for all our youngest learners, and I think will make a real mark in the future for all of these students who've had that benefit. Um, even before joining council, as some of you alluded to, I have been committed to the environment. I'm extremely proud to say that um, I'm, during my time on council, um, in the past four years, the city has planted over 1,000 trees in memory of our, um, our former colleague and friend, Matt Gould. Um, and these trees have contributed to the beautification and ecological health of our surroundings. Uh, the annual Earth Day cleanup, which I uh, founded now celebrates its 18th year, and this stands as a testament to our dedication as a community to environmental stewardship. From 2005 to 2017, I served on the Environmental Commission and the Recycling Advisory Committee and chaired Recycling Advisory Committee from 2010 to 2017. 
My role as liaison on the council allowed me to support numerous environmental initiatives and was one of the highlights of my time on council. Uh, we've expanded the city's recycling program, implemented food composting, pursued sustainable Jersey certification, as uh, among other things, um, and initiatives like the Summit Free Market and the Community Energy Plan were milestones in our journey towards greater sustainability. And I look forward to the strong leadership of our uh, chairs, um, Mimi Zukov and Donna Patel. I, love, I can't wait to see what they accomplish in the next year. Um, as I tr uh, transition from life as an elected official, I take with me many memories, mostly happy, and the satisfaction of knowing that together we made a significant stride toward a safer, more educated, and more environmentally conscious community. I have been fortunate to work with many, many talented and passionate summit volunteers, including my colleagues here on the governing body. I've also had the privilege to work with the most professional and dedicated city staff. I've learned a great deal from the city staff and appreciate their tireless work to move Summit forward. I'm glad that I can call many of these volunteers and city employees, not just my colleagues, but also my friends. I now have a few words from my retiring colleagues. Um, Nora, I've enjoyed working with you for the past six years and greatly admire your generosity in donating your time and talents to the community. I also appreciate your advice and sometimes your uh, candid criticism. Uh, your involvement in many of our council initiatives has led to better outcomes that benefit the community, and so I thank you for that. I hope you'll enjoy your new found free time with your family and your grandchildren, and I look forward to seeing what you'll do next. Um, Jamie, I have looked for, you know, I've enjoyed our weekly CAP committee meetings and was glad to serve with you on the hardest working committee in City Hall. Um, your passion for public and pedestrian safety can be seen in many of the committee's accomplishments. And I will miss our Thursday morning meetings and uh, our nuanced debates on all topics. And I also look forward to seeing what you do next. Phyllis, um, after working with you for so many years on political campaigns and hearing your many excellent ideas on how to improve Summit, I feel so fortunate to have had the opportunity to work alongside you on the safety committee. I've thoroughly enjoyed our time working together, and as promised, you got to see how the sausage gets made. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that I would, and you and I did. Thank and you, you did, yes. So I hope that this experience will help you to advise and mentor another generation of Summit elected officials. Thank you. Um, I am so grateful for the opportunity of serve, to have served the city's the citizens of Summit, and feel confident for those that those remaining on the council the new council members, and the many talented committee volunteers will continue the great work that we have started and lead our community forward with integrity, compassion, and resourcefulness. And I wish everyone a happy holiday season, a happy new year. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, just a few words. I, as you may know, I have, um, I give the State of the City address on, at the reorganization meeting on January 3rd. And I'll have some remarks then, so I, I won't take the time tonight. But I just did want to thank everyone who has such wonderfully, lovely things to say, and I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Amy, Claire, um, Lisa. I, I really appreciate your constant support, and uh, I'll leave the rest for next two weeks from now. Thank you, Mayor. I'm uh, going to bat clean up. And I'll keep it to like 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm joking. I know people have money surrounding 9 o'clock. So, uh, so, okay. The first several times I asked to meet with Phyllis, I was really nervous. <laughs> and I would s drive to your house. I would sit in the driveway. And I would listen to a couple songs, you know, to get pumped up and ready to go and talk to you. You know. <laughs> uh, it was... Yeah, really, yeah. It was, uh, I don't have to do that anymore. Um, <laughs> no, you don't. But it was always very clear to me uh, that you were extremely smart, uh, know exactly the right questions to ask, and tell people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. Uh, and it is those traits that have made her an excellent member of council. Your tenure may have been short, uh, but it was extremely impactful. And I have been so thrilled to work with you these last 
few months, uh, and so thrilled that you were willing to step up for this city again. Thank so you thank for you. asking. Yes. Um, <laughs> Jamie, I am thinking of faking a head injury just so that I can uh, <laughs> just so that I can get to talk to you and have you explain things to me on a regular basis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to get quickly very serious uh, onto the serious stuff. One of the, the things I admire the most about Jamie is that she clearly understands the value of her time. Uh, she chooses what she focuses on based on how impactful it will be and how she can be most helpful. I have to say, I think we have been so incredibly lucky to have you be focused on us. Uh, Jamie, you have approached the issues of the city like a clinician, wielding your tremendous intellect and medical training to diagnose root causes, come up with a treatment plan, communicate and effectuate that plan with confidence and with care. I will miss working with you, but take great comfort in knowing our friendship will continue. Uh, so sometimes when people see Marjorie and me out around town, they mistake us for mother and son. <laughs> <laughs> or husband and wife. Or, yeah. Too. <laughs> but I'm fairly certain that almost no mother and son speak on the phone as often <laughs> as Marjorie and I do. <laughs> Sometimes, multiple times a day, for much of the last six years, my actual mother, my wife, my boss, hear or see me on the phone, and it's pretty safe to assume it's you. Uh, so Marjorie, this time we've spent together serving the city has rarely been easy. Uh, it has rarely been free from controversy. It has always been extremely meaningful. Thank you for everything that you have accomplished to make this city healthy and for the way you have advocated for that which cannot speak, which is the environment. Um, and thank you for all that you have sacrificed in the process of doing that. Um, finally, the running joke I have is that in Summit, the mayor gets all the glory and the council president gets all the crap. Uh, <laughs> and indeed, some of the most meaningful <laughs> moments of my time on council uh, have been when I have stood in for you. Uh, <laughs> acting as mayor when I was council president pro tem but really pretending to be Nora Radist for the day. Uh, but again, to be serious, Nora has shaped the role of the mayor, and in doing so has shaped the course of our city for the better. Uh, for the last eight years in office, she has set a new standard for what servant leadership in this community looks like. Nora, you have vision, you have passion, and you have the ability to pretty much get what you want all the time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there, are, there are too many accomplishments uh, to list here tonight. So for simplicity's sake, I will say thank you for being a great mayor, thank you for being a role model to so many, and thank you for being a wonderful friend to me. Um, and with that, I hope Council, maybe. Council yeah. Brother, I, I would be remiss if I didn't. Yeah, that. sure. Uh, so I've been sitting in this role, in this seat, uh, since September 2015. Uh, I, I, when I first started, I reached out to uh, many stakeholders in the community. And uh, during a, many, many conversations, one name would pop up during them, and it was Phyllis Sank. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> and, and I was like, wow, I, I really have to meet this Phyllis Sank. But for whatever reason, uh, it took almost eight years for us to finally get to sit down and talk and meet. and. Uh, it's been it's been an honor serving oh, with you Michael, at, during you. your ten ten weeks, um, <laughs> and uh, that I was a part of this. So well, you uh, were hopefully we will continue I, many I, conversations I, uh, in, I'm in afraid years. You will, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, expe I expect that. Uh, Dr. Levine, it's uh, that you've you've served uh, on two committees that I spent a lot of time with with you, and it was a great deal that was accomplished this year. Uh, so you have, uh, you, you should look, look at the, your contributions over the last year and a half, I believe it's been that you've served on the council, um, and you've, you've brought great intellect to uh, many discussions and very thoughtful questions that you asked, and 
we were better for it. And I thank you for your professional contributions as well as your personal counsel during uh, this year for me. Um, so thank you for serving. Uh, Marjorie, I don't even know where to start where, over this last six years, but th those three years as council president, we talked a lot, a lot, and we got through some difficult times. And uh, I think we survived, we made it, and uh, we, you know, you, you were certainly uh, played a significant role in all that. And um, for the good and the bad that we, we went through, um, we, we, we got, through the, got through it together, and uh, it was an honor serving with you. I feel the same. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. And uh, for many of these eight plus years that I've served, I've served with the mayor. Um, there hasn't been a mayor I've served for as long as you have that we've worked together. And we had a lot of laughs. And there's been a, a great deal accomplished. I think people will look back and, and see during that time, that those eight years that um, Summit went through some incredible things and you were a part of it. Um, it was a, just personally and professionally an honor to serve with you. And I thank you for all of what you did for the community and certainly for uh, the support that you provided me over the years. Um, we, were, we had our communications person come up and <laughs> Amy did a, uh, a great job in summarizing a lot of what the staff feels and, and about you and, and um, your presence in City Hall. So thank you for, for everything in these last eight years and I'm sure there'll be more that we'll reminisce about um, during that time. Yeah, so well, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, it's certainly been an honor and a privilege um, and I'm wishing and thanking Phyllis and Marjorie and Jamie. All the best, and I appreciate all the time that you've put in and the guidance and honesty you've shown. Um, but as I said, January 3rd. <laughs> Thank you. All right. What do we think about a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, do we have a second? I'll second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll see. The motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Turn at the center.